The most exciting moment in the research of this series has been the arrival of a mystery reel of a very old, very fragile piece of film. It's something only a real specialist could solve, and that specialist is Robin Baker. The British Film Institute site at Berkhamsted houses a national film and television archive. In its temperature controlled vaults, more than 500 million feet of film are preserved. And the archive's team of experts are responsible for the restoration and conservation of the nation's film heritage. We've uncovered a piece of film that's believed to date back to 1910. And Robin thought it might deserve a place in the archive. I'm really excited about this find because anything that comes from this kind of period of film history, so round about the late Edwardian period or early Georgian period, is rare. It necessarily going to be rare because so much film was basically thrown out, burnt, removed. We've lost it. Robin invited the film's owner, Martin Sweet, to the archive to find out if the footage he's unearthed really does offer a rare glimpse of life from a hundred years ago. Martin believed the film shows his family's ancestor, Charles Tuppin, in 1910. He was a minor celebrity, renowned for his skill playing the coach horn. In fact, he was a world champion. Although the family has preserved a record of his achievements through family photographs and newspaper cuttings, the reel of film has lain forgotten and unwatched for more than 50 years. Now this film's been found, Robert and the family hoped it might bring a slice of Edwardian popular culture back to life. But with footage this old, there are important issues to consider. If this film was made in the Edwardian period, it will be shot on nitrate film. Nitrate film is notoriously unstable. And in a way, it's almost like having a time bomb. Most cinema fires are caused by carelessness, such as lack of attention in the projection room. Amazingly, right up until the 1950s, all 35mm film was made of the highly flammable chemical compound cellulose nitrate. And this demonstrates the inflammability of that material, celluloid. Cellulose nitrate film is prone to spontaneous combustion. It will burst into flames dramatically. It's impossible to put those flames out. Even if you put it in water, it will still burn. Um, it can generate its own oxygen to keep it burning. So it's a very, very dangerous substance and something we have to be very careful with how we handle it. The danger of nitrate-based film increases dramatically with age as it begins to decompose. When we heard about Martin's film, we had it transported to the archive under controlled conditions, where it was kept in a special nitrate vault. Um, what we've got here is a system whereby, you can see these grooves here, if there was a fire in any one of the vaults, water would come flooding down here to keep it as cool as possible to make sure that the fire or the heat didn't spread into the next vault and kind of set off a series of explosions and fires. Is that serious? It's, it's ab absolutely that serious. It's also why we only keep a limited number of films down here in each, each vault to, keep, you know, to contain any kind of problem that might happen. And your film, yep. There we go. Right, Martin, there's your film, somewhat recanned since you last saw it. Right, should we take it up? Robin took the film to the archives lab to establish what it showed. One of the real risks with something like this is you build up your hopes that a piece of film is coming in, and then it's almost unviewable. It's so badly decomposed, we know that there's nothing we can do about it. Martin wanted to find out whether his film had survived a century of neglect and whether it would shed new light on his ancestor. Well, fantastic. Already we're start, starting with information. We've got a title for the, the beginning of the film, I assume, at the beginning. So what does it say? Charles Tuppen, ring guard, champion, hornblower. Amazing. But, well, fantastic. Well, at least we know it is Charles Tuppen. Wonderful. What's also 
doubly intriguing is this tiny little logo which says B and C. And B and C was British and Colonial Kinematograph Company. Right. It was one of the major production um, companies in Britain in the teens, really. It started in 1908. What they tend to cover was not so much you know, politicians, but big things that would amuse and entertain the nation. So it would be the boat race, it would be Henley Regatta, that kind of a thing. So this is a professional piece of film rather than an amateur piece of film? Absolutely. Oh, I um, know that. Can we wind on a bit further to see? We can. Okay, so we're coming to a splice here where the um, tinted titles are joined on to the picture. Is this our first moving image of Mr Tuppen then? So clear. It's beautifully yeah. clear. This is really tantalising because I can see it, but to me it just looks like a, a set of 35mm still photographs. <laughs> He's clearly kind of spinning. I'd love to see the rate at which he was moving. Martin's film was far too fragile to project, but he hoped the experts would find a way to make it viewable. So what do you think the likelihood is of us actually being able to get this into a kind of ready condition so that we can see it as moving images. The film is quite brittle, particularly this reel, and um, the brittleness of it, I think, is the greatest problem that will have to be overcome. I think it's, it's possible to make a film-to-film -film copy, and we could then use that. So we'll have a kind of physical 35mm print. So I think probably the next stage is some kind of further examination and that will enable us to make the assessment as to whether we're able to create a new print from it. Right. Uh, it's been a real privilege to be able to see what I have been able to see of the footage so far. I really hope that it, they can work their technical magic to um, make it happen so that we can really see it as it was when it was done a hundred years ago. Robin, it must have been such a thrill. Did the hair stand up in the back of your neck? It's always fantastic whenever you get a piece of nitrate film in. It's so rare. We get a small handful of reels coming in every year, tiny handful. And you have to remember that so little of early British film survives, less than 20%. The old films used to be kind of either thrown away, but worse still, a lot of them were just melted down for their silver content. So if you have a silver ring on your finger, you might actually have the kind of ghost of an old movie wrapped <laughs> around your uh, index finger. How do they get hold of it? We can only really speculate about exactly how they got hold of it, but I think the chances are they'd have gone straight to the whoever ran the cinema or the hall in which it was being shown and said, can we have that, please? Mm -hmm. The reality is, with something like that, the film's kind of finished with as soon as it's been shown. The news story is over, the film production company, BNC Films, no longer need it. So that's probably how it got into their hands. So Mr Tuppen himself thought, I want to keep hold of this for posterity for my family. Exactly. Even if he didn't have a projector to show it on, he could at least hold it up to the light and show the family members those shots of him. It's not likely you need to burst into flames as you hold it, is it? Um, very unlikely indeed. I mean, of course you have to take a lot of precautions. And what rather amused me about this piece of film was they'd be, the family had been keeping it in a wicker basket, so they even provided with its own tinder, um, should it choose to kind of bur burst into flame. But the reality is, no, it doesn't really yeah. burst into flame. The BFI National Archive has never had a fire. I mean, nitrate ha film has obviously particular problems. It can blow up and so on. But Later film on acetate, but acetate also yes. can just break down, can't it? It does indeed, and, and sort of archivists for um, the beginning of the century thought that nitrate was actually the only problem, but, and that safety stock was safe, but actually it, uh, it does have a syndrome called vinegar syndrome, oh. and if you see me uh, yeah. sniffing, sniffing film, <laughs> um, it's a nasty habit, everybody thinks we're a bit peculiar, but the first thing I do is not look at a piece of film, but smell it, um, because that again is a sign of deterioration. And the other thing, it all warps, it all right. dries out, it all twists, so it's very important that you get that transferred and onto, onto DVD. This is the key thing, isn't it? I mean, go to an expert and act, otherwise precious archives will be lost forever. Well, at the end of the programme, we'll show you whether the film was able to be restored by Robin and his team. I mean
Well, earlier in the program, we told you the story of a short piece of film from around 1910. It was brought to us by Martin Sweet on behalf of the descendants of Charles Tuppen, a celebrated post-horn player of the day. It was left with Robin and his team at the British Film Institute to try to restore it. And after they'd had a chance to work on the film, Robin and I met the family to show them what happened. When Martin Sweet came to the British Film Institute's Conservation Centre to have his hundred-year-old film looked at by the experts, nobody knew if it could be restored. The brittleness of it, I think, is the greatest problem that will have to be overcome. Martin left his footage with the technicians, hoping they'd managed to resurrect the moving images of his family's celebrity ancestor, Charles Tuppen, coach horn player. After weeks of painstaking restoration work, we were ready to share the results. I met Robin, Martin and Charles Tuppen's granddaughters, Joyce and Janet, for a premiere of their family film. First, I wanted to find out what Joyce and Janet knew about their famous grandfather. Did he go all over the country? playing the post horn because he was quite a celebrity by then. He used to start the Ascot races, whereas we now have bands to play uh, when royalty arrived. It was our granddad who used to play the horn mm. when they arrived. The Van de Vaults, which were very wealthy family at the time, wanted to take the whole family over to America and set him up in America, but my grandmother wouldn't cross the sea, so they stayed in England. <laughs> Did you ever get a chance to see the film, you know, a long time ago. About 50 years ago, didn't we? Yes. saw it on a sheet on the wall. Where was <laughs> that? Very old projector. It was just before my daughter's christening, just over 50 years ago, and the vicar brought along one of these very old-fashioned projectors, mm -hmm. and my dad held a sheet up, and we saw it very... But it wasn't good, was it? It wasn't good, but we just managed to get a few images on the sheet. Joyce and Janet never knew their grandfather. They're hoping the newly restored copy of their century-old film will bring to life this important figure in their family history. Ready for it? Yes. <laughs> You see him moving around as, as though it were yesterday. It's absolutely amazing. <gasps> oh, wasn't it? Your grandfather a hundred years ago. Absolutely, yes. that's incredible, isn't it? And not many people can see that they have that kind of wonderful memory of their grandfather Absolutely. alive in a sense. Absolutely. That's incredible, isn't see, it? Never really thought we'd see that, <laughs> did we? No, no. Tremendous. Well done. I mean, what an achievement. Extraordinary achievement by the team at the BFI National Archive and very wonderful to have a piece of film where it's actually so relevant to a family. Thanks so much for all the footage you've sent in. I'm sure we've only scratched the surface.